Hey, my good friends, Sam Haymart for Test Driven TV. Today, we're looking at the massively powerful 702 horsepower 2021 Ram TRX. Finally got my hands on one, so I'm gonna show it to you inside now. We're gonna take it for a little drive out here in the desert, and I'm gonna tell you what I really think. You know, there's the age-old question, what do you get the guy that's already got everything? And the answer is you get him this thing, because this is just a little bit more than everything. This is the TRX from Ram, based on the 1500 and the newest competitor to the Ford Raptor out there. And I gotta tell you, back in 2016, when they first came out with the concept vehicle of this, I never really believed they'd build this thing because along with all of this bodywork and hardware and off-road goodness comes the 702 horsepower supercharged engine. And that is, well, that's pretty ballsy in this particular universe when we have gas guzzler taxes, when we have, you know, EPA and all of this stuff to just throw this thing into a truck like this, but they've done it. And to help that engine breathe, looking straight at this unique hood, you can see there's a big scoop right there at the front that feeds into the air filter elements along with another intake just behind the grill. It's a 50-50 mix and it really helps this thing breathe and it gives this thing a nice sound, sort of a cold air intake supercharger whine when you really put your foot into it. And on that hood, you can also see some other vent design elements along with the 6.2 liter supercharged emblems. Looking at the grill, this debuts a new design language for Ram with the letters across the front. Very similar to the Rebel, but a little bit more muscular and wider because this thing does have an eight inch wider width with these front fenders and a six inch wider track to go with it and it gives extra room for these big wheels and tires and what are those here on this one 18 by 9 these are actually optional wheels beadlock capable i think they look badass 35 inch tires on this one as well and really sort of adds to the look along with the capability given by the two inch lift that we've got here when you look underneath at the suspension on the front we've got aluminum forged control arms both top and bottom and those shocks are really what makes this thing handle and drive amazing, adaptive, constantly adjusting Bilstein Blackhawk shocks. Sort of the Bilstein version of the Fox shocks that the Raptor has. Now these are 2.6 inches in diameter, not quite as big as the ones on the newest Raptor, but uh, I found that they actually work quite well. And we'll get to that here when we get out on the test drive. The lighting package on this also is quite substantial. We've got clearance lights, the little LED markers you see sort of outlining the perimeter of this along with the LED headlights and the fog lights down below. From this angle, you can see that one of the options this has is the Mopar rock rails. Now these are rock rails, meaning that they are really here to protect the body of this truck from underbrush and boulders. And when you get this thing up over terrain to help keep your body from getting dented and scraped up, They've actually got grips on here so that you can use these as running boards, but they're not really very effective running boards because they're actually quite thin. And the fact of the matter is this truck with its two inch lift really could use some good running boards on it. So uh, these are probably decent rock rails, but not the best running boards if that's what you're looking for. Coming to the rear three quarter view, you can see that we've got TRX logos on the bed sides. These are metal outer shells and black plastic cladding around the wheel well. Looking through the wheel well, you can see the beautiful Bilstein Blackhawk TRX branded shocks. These are fully adaptable and active, and we'll get into that when we talk about chassis and the test drive, but they do have remote reservoirs. This rear suspension also has its own axle damper for wheel hop in the center, along with really tall springs, which help that extra lift and give us over 13 inches of wheel travel, both at the rear as well as the front. Amazing stuff. In the bed, you can actually see this has got a lot of stuff going on. There's LED lights, the cleat system, but optioned here also is the big spare tire and spare tire mount. A very cool thing that looks awesome and does have some utility if you're a real serious off-roader. However, it renders your bed mostly useless. But very interesting on this truck I noticed is that didn't delete the spare tire underneath. So as equipped right now, this truck's actually got two spares, which is a very cool thing. And while we're down there at the back, you can also see this thing's got huge five inch dual exhaust tips. Now the exhaust pipes themselves aren't that big, but the tips are, and that gives quite a bit of resonance when you really lay into this thing. 
The interior of the Ram pickup truck is, in my opinion, one of the best in the business right now. That is to say that Ford and General Motors interiors aren't quite here yet, although the 2021 Ford F-150 has gotten a lot better. But Ram has just really stepped it up in the way of materials, switch gear, feature content, design, all those things. And part of the reason that we have a close to $90,000 price tag on this vehicle is because we have the level two premium package, which for the interior means all of the soft stitch trim you see on the dash, on the console, on the door panels, as well as the carbon fiber. And these leather seats also have a nice suede in them, as does the steering wheel. One of the biggest design details that sets the TRX apart from the rest of the Ram 1500 lineup is this center console. It's unique, and what do you see that's different here? It has a shifter in it. Most of the Ram pickup trucks have a big knob on the dash that is your gear selector, and it sucks. This is exactly what a truck like this needs, a real gear shift lever. And this console has plenty of storage in it. Down in the bottom, there's room for at least gosh, four gallons of water down there. It's huge. And on the top of the center console is a TRX badge that has your VIN number on it. A very cool thing if you're spending this much money for a special edition truck. You can have big tall gas station cups in here and they're not going to get in the way of anything and storage down there for your phone and other devices along with all the ports you could ever need. Down at the bottom, auxiliary switches. Very cool for a truck like this because owners of this truck are probably going to be having a lot of accessories like LED lighting and things like that. These seats are very comfortable. They've always been comfortable in the Ram. Fully power adjustable memory settings. They have both heating and ventilation. The steering wheel is a special steering wheel. It's a flat bottom, carbon fiber trim. It has suede on top. Aluminum paddle shifters, very high quality. They have a good feel. And looking ahead to the instrument cluster, a traditional two dial setup with a large digital screen in the center that allows you to display all sorts of things and you can customize that to your liking. This one also has the head up display, which now has up to five different customizable panels in it for displaying information that you want to see that debuts here on the TRX. All the drive mode settings, the launch control and the four wheel drive controls are located down here where the twist knob would be a nice location and a lot of that stuff lights up on the screen and you can control it there as well as monitor what those modes are doing on the center instrument cluster. Just like the last time I tested a Ram pickup truck, I'm very impressed with the back seat. Not only is it comfortable, the seating height is good, there's plenty of leg room. I don't even really need to tell you about how I have these seats set for my height. There's so much room back here, I, I could have a seven footer up here and I'd still be doing pretty good. And even though my legs are perched up just a little bit, the nice thing about these seats is they support you, they're comfortable, and it's just comfortable to sit back here. And that would be the same thing for the middle passenger as well as for outboard passengers. A lot of amenities back here, I do have the carbon fiber trim, heated seats back here as well as ventilated seats don't find that very often in a pickup truck and plenty of ports to plug everything in as well as hvac vents down there you'd expect that at this price um, a lot of versatility too these seats fold up in a 60 40 split there's under seat storage what's also cool in the ram is there's floor storage underneath those mats you can pull them up and there's little doors down there for some places to hide things away which is pretty cool i like hiding things away here uh, not so gracefully putting it down nice big armrest cup holders and storage inside that that folds down if you don't need that third passenger um, I like it this is a very well done interior the trims in here really set the tone for a high quality feel that fits with the $90,000 price tag if I'm honest I'm very impressed with the fact that um, unlike some of the other truck brands out there, when you spend this much on RAM, you feel like you spent this much on RAM. You don't have cheap pieces along with expensive pieces. Everything with this interior is very consistent. So uh, not only do we have the versatility, the functionality, the tools we need to get everything done, but this is truly the lap of luxury. This interior gets five out of five stars. This infotainment system is top of the line with the Harman Kardon audio, the portrait style screen, and what I really like about this is not only are the graphics exceptional, but they've given us hard controls all around the perimeter of this screen for all the major things you want to use, like HVAC controls, fan, temperature. It has volume and tuning knobs, and a lot of those things are duplicated on the touchscreen, but you can customize this thing in any number of ways 
to display different panels of what you want to have, different cards as they call them. The sound quality from the Harman Kardon audio is exceptionally good. And when you use the cameras that are on here, forward view camera, 360 degree view camera, and especially when you're off-roading, all of the camera views that you can dial right into are really what you need here. This infotainment system is really one of the best in the business. You connect, um, it has been for some time, and therefore it gets five out of five stars. All right, so they've given me a 700 horsepower off-road pickup truck. Obviously, the first question everyone's gonna wanna know is how fast does this thing go? Well, what Ram tells me is zero to 60 in four and a half seconds, a 12.9 second ET. Those are pretty good numbers for a muscle car, let alone a 6,400 pound pickup truck. The good news is they've given this thing full-time four-wheel drive. That's good because 700 horsepower in a pickup truck doesn't always sound like that great of an idea. What that does is put that power to the ground the way you want it at all times. And of course, we've got all forms of launch control and computer control and all the things that you expect in a modern day powerhouse. But I like to just let it be in consumer mode to ask my question, how does it go? Woo! Whoa! <laughs> and 60. Holy nuts! Woo! Okay, on almost 100, and this thing's rocking and rolling, man. <laughs> oh, yes. Did you hear that? This thing sounds absolutely... i got to slow down for the curve. This is not a muscle car. Woo! <laughs> this is great, man. I want one. I want one. But you really got to slow down for the curves, because this is not a sports car. This is a truck that boats around at speed, let me tell you. So yeah, 702 horsepower, 650 pound feet of torque in a big high truck. <laughs> the eight speed automatic transmission works really good. It's worked really good in everything I've driven from this company, Stellantis, used to be Chrysler. So seriously, this is a great motor. It's refined. They've really done a great job putting this thing together in the Charger, in the Challenger, in the Durango. Everything it's in, it's absolutely a joy to behold. There is only one catch. MPG is rated at 10 city, 14 highway, and 12 combined. And, well, with the way I drive this thing, I've gotten about 10 this week. <laughs> so, cattle guard. There's always a catch. There's always a catch. There's always a silver lining on a cloud, but there's always a cloud on a silver lining. What are you going to do? Listen to this. <laughs> Listen to that. Anyway, so this powertrain really makes me happy. It's well done. It's refined. It's got everything you want in a muscle truck. So there you go. Yeah. Um, how am I going to rate this? Well, it's going to be four out of five stars because it's really thirsty and there is a star for fuel economy. I, I got to be honest. So there you go. It'd be a five if I didn't really care, if I just scratched that off. But it's four out of five stars. So the acceleration thing's a lot of fun. Duh. But the big question I have is how does a 700 horsepower off-road toy actually live when you're driving around town and on paved roads where, let's be honest, probably 90 to 95 percent of the time this truck will be driven on city streets, on paved roads and things like that. How does it handle? Is it livable in this environment? And so the suspension on this is actually very soft. It's tuned for off-roading. You'd expect that. It has a very sort of marshmallowy sort of jeepness to it, which I love. And to really help make this thing be the best of all worlds, it has these Bilstein Blackhawk shocks, which are adaptive, which means uh, they can adjust to what's going on at 100 milliseconds. I mean, they can get stiff, they can get soft, they can anticipate what's going on with the terrain, and in that way, they can be right there where you need them at a uh, millisecond's notice. So with this unique frame that they've given us, very stiff frame, and a softer suspension. This thing actually has a nice stability out here on the highway. It's very quiet, it feels stable. Yes, it does have a little bit of body roll, so if you're on a curvy road and you throw it into a curve, you know, you get that kind of, whoa, you're rolling into it a little bit. But 
these big, huge 35 inch off-road tires do manage to provide enough grip on the highway that you're not gonna get any white knuckle moments on a mountain road. But obviously the big question is, this is an off-road toy. How does it drive off-road? So while this is not truly off-roading, I like to take any vehicle that I test, off-road trucks, SUVs, just regular trucks out here on the trail in the desert because this does test the suspension pretty well. And this really has the ultimate in any production vehicle suspension. Completely adjustable, adaptable shocks. These Bilsteins, competitive with the Fox shocks that you would find on the Ford Raptor. And these are tied to the drive modes and there are a multitude of drive modes here tied in with the computer and all of the electronic get me through the mud controls and things like that. And to be honest with you folks, I don't have a lot of love for that stuff so I don't tend to talk about it. If you wanna know how well the computerized guide you through the terrain stuff works, you're gonna to have to watch somebody else's video. I wanna find out how well built this is, what it feels like when I'm driving it, does it feel like a POS or not? And on the trail, all of the suspension travel has conspired to give me a vehicle that I haven't bottomed out with over some of these bumps and I can roll out here at a pretty good clip. And so far, what I'm finding out is this chassis is put together relatively well. And as I go over some of these bumps, I have hit the jounce bumpers once or twice, but they're good jounce bumpers, so um, it really does work. And because this is an off-road tuned vehicle, uh, the suspension is tuned very softly and I've got this on just auto mode. I haven't really dialed in a lot of the specific drive modes. I just wanna see how this feels. One thing I will point out though, is especially in comparison with the Raptor, is you can tell that there is a heavy V8 in the front of this thing when you go over a rougher train. As impressed as I am on the trail, the Desert Washboard Road is really where I wanted to see how this drives. And any vehicle I bring out here, this is a test because this rhythmic surface really shows me how well built this vehicle is, how strong is the frame, how well is the suspension tuned, is it all bolted together well, is the body structure tight, is it bolted together, how about the interior, all of those things, because this washboard road, even though is isn't the heavy duty off-roading this truck is truly capable of, it's a really good test of whether it's a piece of shit or not, honest. So what I'm finding out here is that this thing's rolling over this road with a lot of grace. There is a little bit of vibration in the body structure and I am getting just a slight bit of kickback in the steering, but nothing I wouldn't expect out here on this surface. And the suspension tuning and the uh, tuning of the dynamic systems here are actually such that with the power this truck has, you could really let this thing roll out here on a gravel road and while the computer isn't going to overcome physics, if you really get this thing in a snarl, it does a pretty good job of controlling the pitch and yaw if you start pushing it around a corner a little faster than you should. Overall, I'm impressed. This is a chassis that is very capable of going pretty much anywhere you can want to go off-road. It does it in a very refined manner. I do think that the Ford Raptor does have a little bit more body control in some instances. The suspension tuning on this could be just a little bit more refined in a couple of ways when it comes to the shock damping. I think the Fox shocks on the Raptor uh, might have a little bit of an edge on this. That said, the chassis is four out of five stars. All right, my good friends, now it's time to wrap it up a little bit. I really like it a lot. I had a great time playing with this truck and this is a truck I could totally see myself living in every day in spite of the fact that it costs a mint to buy and it costs a mint to feed. And that does play into value, which is the last thing I like to measure here. And so when I look at value, I look at competition, options pricing, base pricing, all of those things. And there's only really one competitor here at the moment, that being the Ford Raptor. And yes, the Ford Raptor is pretty beat by this thing in a lot of ways, but if you're let down by that, if you're a Ford guy, relax. If not for this truck, you wouldn't have a Ford Raptor R coming pretty soon with the power of a V8. That's probably gonna be just a little bit more than this offers just to beat them at the game. But that said, here we're quite a bit more money than the Raptor, starting out around 70 base price. As option, we're just under $90,000. That's a lot of clams for a big truck, but not unheard of. Um, 
boy, you know, I think it's pretty close to worth it. It's got an interior that feels like a $90,000 vehicle interior. There's a lot going on here that um, in no way do I say this thing's just way, 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 way overpriced. Although it is um, sticking it to you on the options, I think. And so when we look at how I measure value, you can see how I scored that out. We're at four out of five stars for value. And so when we put that together with everything we talked about here today, we're four and a half stars for the total review. And it goes on my buy it list. Yeah, if I was spending hundred grand for an off-road play toy, I would totally get this. I love it. There you go. So if you like the test drive you just saw, I invite you to see my latest one right there. And better yet, subscribe to my YouTube channel down there. Either way, stay tuned.